Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Uh, this Sunday, we were looking at Daniel chapter 3. And in there, there's this interesting thing where there's a fourth person in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so I wanted to uh, ask the question, who is it that's in the fire? Who is this person that Nebuchadnezzar said he saw a fourth man who was like the son of the gods? The King James Version actually says, like the son of God. So who is this that's in there and, and why is it that I think that? Well, it's important to remember that the main description, in fact, the only description we really get of the fourth man in the fire, the one that's like the son of the gods, is coming from Nebuchadnezzar, who's a pagan king at this point. Whether he converts later, a, a topic we'll look at a little bit in chapter four, uh, he's certainly not at this point. And so we have to recognize it's interesting that Nebuchadnezzar in the account of the story refers to this person first as a man. In verse 25, I see another man walking the fire, four men. In verse 25, he also refers to him as the fourth one as the son, a son of the gods. I'll come back to that phrase in just a moment. And then in verse 28, he refers to him as an angel that was sent by their God. So what we can take out of this is uh, there's clearly a supernatural being. He's being described as one like a son of the gods and being described as an angel. Nebuchadnezzar seems to think that this is a supernatural being in the, in the fire, but his appearance is like a human being. And so that's what we know from Nebuchadnezzar. Now, secondly, there's a question whether the phrase that Nebuchadnezzar uses, he's like a son of the gods, or as the King James and a few other translations have it, like the son of God, how do we uh, determine what that is? Well, the difficulty that comes in here is that the Aramaic word for uh, God or the gods, just like the Hebrew word Elohim, which is the word for God in Hebrew. Elohim is a plural. The same thing is going on with the Aramaic word that underlies this. It's plural, but when it is used to speak of the God of Israel, it actually becomes a singular. It's plural in form, but when we recognize when you're speaking of the gods of Babylon, Babylon had many gods, but Israel only has one God. And so they use the same term Elohim would refer to the gods of the nations, but it also refers to the singular God of Israel. Now, what's interesting is when the Aramaic of this portion, when Daniel was translated into Greek, uh, Theodosian, who did a Greek translation around AD 150, he actually translated it as the son of God. Okay, that was the, the translation that was done then, the son of God, because when it goes into Greek, they're very particular which it means. But the Septuagint actually changed it and they made it an angel of God. So they went with the singular and said, well, we're talking about God here, not the gods, but we're going to make it an angel of God. They actually translate it with a uh, different word. It's different than the Hebrew. But again, in all of these, we see that it's clearly some sort of supernatural being. It's not just another human being. There's something supernatural going on. Now, I joked a little bit on Sunday uh, to state that I really believe that it is a Jesus that's in the fire with them. Jesus before his incarnation, making an appearance and being with them. Now, wh why do I say this? Well, first off, it's clear at a minimum God sent an angel to be with them uh, in the fire. The person's described in supernatural terms, and obviously something supernatural is going on here because they're not being burned. And for the fourth person to have shown up uh, to be with them as they go through this fiery ordeal, in a sense to protect them, there has to be something supernatural going on. So at a minimum, it must be some sort of angel with them. But in the Old Testament, we read quite often of this person that's known as the angel of the Lord. And I think this is another vision of the angel of the Lord. And very often in the Old Testament, in fact, almost every time we read of the angel of the Lord, it's a vision of Jesus. It's a visitation of Jesus from before the incarnation. This person, the angel of the Lord appears all over the Old Testament. The first time the angel of the Lord appears is actually with Hagar. You remember Hagar is the handmaiden to Sarah. Uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah concoct this crazy plan. They have Hagar 
uh, get pregnant. Uh, she's pregnant with Ishmael. Then Ishmael is born. They're trying to help God out. It's not working out. Hagar, she flees from Sarai, uh, goes off, and she thinks she's dying in the desert. And the angel of the Lord appears to her at that time and comes and ministers to her and uh, strengthens her and sends her back. We also see the angel of the Lord appear at the sacrifice of Isaac. When Isaac is about to be sacrificed, it's the angel of the Lord that appears to him. It's the angel of the Lord who is in the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. And so all of these are uh, appearances of the angel of the Lord. And many, many biblical scholars, many Christians down through the ages have recognized these are pre-incarnate appearances of Jesus because the angel of the Lord is both one with Yahweh. He speaks as if he's Yahweh, but he also speaks as if he's distinct from Yahweh. He's somehow one with the Lord, but distinct from the Lord. We see a very similar thing in Genesis chapter 32, where Jacob is wrestling with a man. And the word that is used is he's a man, just like Nebuchadnezzar says, I see a fourth man in the fire. Jacob wrestles with the man, but then he says in retrospect afterwards, I've seen the face of God. I'm wrestling with this man, but in this man, I see the face of God himself. So again, it's one who seems to be like us, but it's clearly different, it's clearly supernatural, is one with God so that to see this person is to see God, but yet is distinct from God. And so most Christians down through the ages have seen these as pre-incarnate appearances of Christ. I also think that in this specific case, even though the phrase angel of the Lord is not used here, that it really, really is because of what's going to come in Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel 7, we're going to see that Daniel has a vision and he speaks of, in verses 13 and 14, one who is like a son of man going up to the throne of God and, and receiving authority and power. And the New Testament tells us that is Jesus, this one like a son of man that goes up uh, to receive authority and power is specifically referenced by Jesus himself in Mark chapter 14. And also it's referenced in Revelation chapter one. That phrase is used so that we know Daniel 7, 13 and 14 is a vision of Jesus before he's become incarnate, but it's speaking of the time at the ascension when he goes up and he receives all authority and the kingdom of God is established here on earth. He's also seen, you remember in Daniel chapter two, Jesus is the rock that is cut out of the mountain without human hands. He comes, he strikes down the other kingdoms, he establishes the kingdom of God, which begins to grow in the earth, like the woman mixing the yeast into the huge amount of flour, and it's working all throughout, and it's growing over time. That's what's going on with the kingdom of God even today. So all of these are ways we know in Daniel that are Jesus. And I think here in Daniel chapter three, it's yet another reference that Jesus came down to meet with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to walk through the fire with them. Uh, I believe he's reminding them again of the promise in Isaiah that I told you I would be with you. I, the Lord, am with you. And I, Jesus, am Yahweh. I am with you in the fire. And that it's a reminder to us that number one, we should be seeing Christ in all of scripture. We should be looking to see his hand all around us and a reminder that our God goes with us everywhere. Jesus, when he becomes incarnate, is God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, and that he walks with us, whatever fire we're going through. And friends, if we are thrown into a fire and unlike Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're not delivered out of it. We die in that fire like Latimer and Ridley did. We can know that Jesus is with us. We will never go anywhere. He will not be with us. And most importantly, he went to the fires of hell for us. And because he went through that, we never will. You and I, as the people of God, have been delivered from the only fire that matters. And it was done by Jesus. He went there for us, ahead of us, in our place. And so he delivers us from any other fire. I hope this encourages you as you think through and you're reading in Daniel. I hope you're enjoying our study as we're walking through. Friends, we are exiles. We are aliens and strangers. But the good thing is our God is with us. Wherever we are, whatever we are walking through, he is God with us. 
I hope you have a good week. I look forward to us uh, gathering together to work at the pop-up pantry, if many of us can make it at Eastport on Saturday, uh, Eastport Elementary, and then to gather together for worship this coming Sunday when we'll look at Daniel chapter 4. God bless.